Hello! So today we're looking at Kevin Can F Himself, Season 2, Episode 1, a series which is set in Worcester, but is not filmed in Worcester. I've had some people say, why does it matter where something is filmed? And if you think about movies like Taxi Driver, which is shot in New York City, that would have been an entirely different movie if it wasn't actually in New York City, or Ocean's Eleven if it wasn't shot in Vegas, or the Bosch series if it wasn't shot in LA. The location is a character. It adds realism and it gives texture and nuance to all of the scenes, all of the locations, the way the weather is, everything. So there's a huge importance into something being shot in the place it's supposed to be shot in. And if that's not clear to some people, then I'll make a separate video talking more about that because it is incredibly important. Unless you're filming Dune or something like that, that is in a fictional place, it's really important that if something is focused on a town or city, that it's actually shot in that location to show those authentic landscapes and buildings and architecture and everything else. All right, so where we left this off, um, Allison and Patty had been attacked by Neil because Neil had overheard what was going on and they in self-defense attacked him back and now he's laying on the ground and he's upset because he heard that they were trying to kill uh, Kevin and he of course wants to protect Kevin and he is still in the same shirt from before which is the Worcester hockey shirt and I went over in the past series of how excited I was at first that they had gotten an authentic ice cat shirt but then how sad I was to find out that they had faked it. And I really don't see why they faked it. This was a real hockey team and he played hockey. It would have been absolutely perfect. So it's just one of those things that baffles me that they could have easily made this authentic and they deliberately chose not to. Get a quick shot of Diane coming in and she wants to go to the seas because she's having a rough time with her husband who is cheating on her. And that's not an actual location anywhere in Worcester, which is a shame they could have used somewhere. And then we have a shot of Allison and a Worcester Hairstyling Institute sweatshirt that she grabbed out of Patty's basement because she needed to get something new to change into. And we had seen Patty in this previously, and there is not a place called the Worcester Hairstyling Institute, even though there are some hairstyling institutes, beauty salon places, training places in the Worcester area. So this is another uh, false location that they've invented. So Patty and Tammy have gone out for breakfast because Patty was trying to get Tammy not to come into the house. And they've chosen a cute little breakfast place, which they say is in Worcester, of course, but it is not. This is actually Ashley's, which is in Braintree, which is a fair distance away, an hour away. And that's part of what, again, is so confusing. If they were going to use other locations, there are oodles of places they could have used right around Worcester that it would at least reflect the Worcester environment without going so far away that it just really isn't about the Worcester location anymore. So here we've got Allison and Neil chatting together, and Allison is trying to show Neil that Kevin doesn't care about either of them, that Kevin was even happy and laughing when Neil got hurt when he was playing around on the Turtle Boy statue and he got drunk and blacked out and fell off and hurt himself. So I am glad that they have finally mentioned the Turtle Boy statue because I've talked about this statue in the past. And here it is in all its glory. So a person decided they wanted to give a fountain because back in the days of horses and dogs and things, it was important to have drinking water around them. So they wanted to design this fountain and it was going to have a statue on it. And Charles Y. Harvey in New York City was the sculptor who decided he was going to work on this statue. <laughs> and he immediately started feeling like he was not up to the task of designing this statue and that he was going to fail at it. And then he started hearing voices which commanded him to kill himself. And he thought that the statue itself was speaking to him, telling him to kill himself. And the voices even set a date of Saturday, January 27, 1912. And sure enough, the sculptor went and killed himself on that date. And then someone else had to take over and finish this statue. So it seems pretty clear that the sculptor was mentally ill. And this is the design he decided to use. And instead of changing the design or giving up on it, they plowed forward with the design. And this is now sitting next to our main library. As you can imagine, there's a, quite a lot of questions from people about why that statue is appropriate to have in the middle of a public square near a library. So now we get a glimpse of the ad that Kevin has made for himself with his wife's help with the Worcester Wild Dude. 
And as you imagine, this doesn't make the mayor happy, but it makes the local bar patron super happy, and he becomes uh, regionally famous for this performance. And Allison only realizes that when she goes out to the Seas restaurant, which again, I'm not sure where this is, and the whole bar begins singing all around her about it. And they talk about Kevin going to sing it live tomorrow at Kelly's Bar. And there is no Kelly's Bar in Worcester. We do have a Kelly Square, which is the infamous mess, and they mentioned that in Season 1, Episode 1. So this is what Kelly Square used to look like before they fixed it up. It was an entire nightmare and the worst intersection in the entire state of Massachusetts. So there are some bars on Kelly Square, and it would have been nice if they called out one of those as the place that he was going to sing at. And then we've got Kevin in the Blarney Tom's Brewhouse shirt. And this is something that he's worn in the past. And as I mentioned in the past, there is not a Blarney Toms in Worcester, but there is a Blarney Stone, or there was a Blarney Stone, and it ran into all sorts of pretty serious legal problems. So this is something that the producers should have stayed far away from for various reasons. If they're changing names of everything else, they should have changed the name of this. Right, so we've got Allison at the Worcester Public Library, or the pseudo Worcester Public Library, and she's trying to do a web search. And now she's trying to look for how to fake your own death, because this is her new plan. And again, the actual Worcester Public Library is large. It is well stocked. It has all sorts of resources. It has beautiful art displays and programs there. So it's a shame that they had to try to denigrate the library and what it offers. And also, when she tries to look for content, it keeps showing that she can't get to content. And the Worcester Public Library doesn't do that at all. It absolutely wants to help you find whatever you want to find. So I also find that a little disappointing that they had to pretend that a library wasn't going to function as a library. So these are the things I noticed in Kevin Can F Himself, Season 2, Episode 1. And for the people who think that a location doesn't matter in a situation like this, where the location really is a main character in the storyline, I'd have you think about Lost in Translation. What if that hadn't been set in Tokyo? or Insomnia or Fargo, the locations define the characters and they define the way the characters interact with each other and see the world. And that's absolutely true here with Kevin Can F himself. With the way these characters interact with each other, the way they build relationships or don't build relationships, the way they have a sense about where they belong in the world, all of that has to do with growing up in a place like Worcester and growing up in that environment and interacting with Worcester type of people through pretty much their entire lives, if we can judge by this. So if that's still not clear, I think I'll put together a video for people that talks about that and explores it and looks at some of these movies like Taxi Driver or Bosch or Lost in Translation and explores how the location really makes such a heavy impact on the characters and the plot line and the emotional impact of all of it. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. And other than that, I will plow forward with episode two.